So let's talk about your training routine. Like, so to, for you and your partner, to, mm -hmm. for you guys to, in 2018, have that pinnacle moment, you know, let's, let's start, let's start leading up to that was, you know, okay. you, you obviously are deep into your career at this point, right? Four years into my beach career. Okay. Yep. Okay. And, um, let's start there then. Did, okay. did your training have to change from indoor? You played professionally overseas. I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about so that, lived, the training, and then and then take us into beach volleyball. Okay. So after college, I moved, I actually moved to California thinking I was going to pursue beach volleyball right away back in 2010. And then I got an opportunity and offer to go play overseas. So I decided to play indoor overseas. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do that instead. Um, so I started in the Maldives, and then I played four years in France, Finland, Sweden, and Switzerland. And then my last season in Switzerland, it was 2013, 2014. So then in April of 2014, our season ended and I decided to move to California full time and completely dive into beach volleyball. And it's kind of funny because in that moment I was like, oh, I'll, you know, I'm going to try to go for the 2016 Olympics. Why not? <laughs> and little did I know what it actually takes to be an Olympian. Um, to think that I could start beach volleyball in 2014 and get to the Olympics in 2016 was an outrageous goal. And Were people telling you that? Did that no. become self-evident as you started training yes. for it? It was self-evident. I was like, I mean, I couldn't even get into international events. I didn't know. I didn't know how it all worked. Um, and with beach volleyball, we don't have trials. It's all a point system. So you basically have to be playing for three to four years to even gain points to get into tournaments that will then qualify you for the Olympics. Mm. So that in itself is a process. Um, and I had never played beach volleyball before. So I had to learn a complete, it's a completely different sport than indoor. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn a new sport and try to go to tournaments and gain points in that I, I quickly found out 2016 was off the board. Like okay. That's okay. Yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. not happening. Did you see? Um, did you see Olympians playing? And and absolutely. Okay. And you were like, okay, I got to a little bit of work to do. Yes. And in yes. that realization, emotionally, how do how do you feel in that moment when you make that realization? Are you hungry for the next level? And, absolutely. Okay. Um, I was fortunate enough to be invited to some of the practices that like Carrie Walsh, April Ross were a part of, and going to those practices, I was like, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Um. These girls work so hard and I just knew, I knew that I had it in me. So I was right. I was like, okay, 2016 is not it, but 2020 is my vision. Mm. So from that point on, I put everything I could into being an Olympian for 2020. Well, let's linger on that because I think that's something that, that's a way that you relate to a lot of people. Everybody mm -hmm. wants things so fast nowadays. So fast. We want it like tomorrow. And mm -hmm. you've got to put the work in. There's no yeah. such thing as handouts, right? There's not. Yeah. There's definitely not. Um, and especially, you know, I didn't go. I played indoor volleyball at Wichita State. Very good program. It's not a top 10 program in the country. Um, I didn't play for USA Volleyball as a junior. So, and I didn't start beach volleyball until I was 26 years old. So I already had, I was already behind with all of it. Um, and so that made me even more want to push to like, I got to get it done fast. I got to get, get it done fast. Um, but I'm also somebody who wants to do it the right way. I didn't want a handout. I wanted to know that when I stand on top of a podium, I did that. You know, I have my team, I have my teammate and my coaches and everybody that obviously is a part of that, but I didn't want... Of course, I always applied for wild cards. Like, yeah, that'd be great if I could, you know, just get into the tournament. Right. At the end, end of the day, at the end of my nine-year career, I have never received a wild card in my entire career. Mm -hmm. And that's actually something I'm pretty proud of because it's like I earned everything mm -hmm. that I received. Yeah, you had this You had uh, this uphill battle. Yeah. It seems like you're... Absolutely. I always tell people uh, if you are starting in a ditch... And everybody else is at the starting line and they're on mm -hmm. flat ground and you're running a marathon. Yeah. Getting out of that ditch, you're gonna have to run faster. Yeah. That's just <laughs> exactly. the only strategy is that yes. you have to climb out and then run faster. And then run faster. And yeah. so um I, I think that's just so interesting because you saw this this thing that you wanted in your heart, in your mind, more than anything, mm -hmm. but then you had enough self-awareness to to push that out so that you could become better and and train for it. And so many of us fail to look at themselves in the mirror and just mm -hmm. 
admit the shortcomings that we have because in that honesty is where all progress is birth. Right. right. All progress is birth with an opportunity to get better at something. And unless we're honest with ourselves, we can't identify that and, and execute it. So right. it, it sounded like you had this moment that you identified, hey, I'm going to go do this. And here's the game plan. Yeah. And I'm sure a big part of that game plan was like fitness. I mean, just Huge. guys, I mean, you and, and a lot of vo most volleyball players are super lean, mm -hmm. strong, athletic um, versatile in all three planes of motion. Right. Um, so talk to me about your training regimen. Cause that doesn't happen. It's not, there's no such thing as luck and fitness, no. I, right? Like yeah. there's no that. such thing as luck <laughs> as in training. You, yeah. you maybe get lucky because you were prepared and there was an opportunity coming your way. Mm -hmm. Uh, that if you want to call luck that that's great, but like <laughs> try to get lucky and do 50 push ups in a row. It doesn't necessarily yeah. happen. So break down yeah. Your training regimen, what did you learn about your body, how to train, the importance of it, and just your overall philosophy? I know you're obviously um, super fit and into fitness, and that's yeah, what you do yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I um, I needed to gain an edge because everybody, anyone that's playing on the world tour is, you know, the best volleyball players in the world. And it's like, I already felt, like I said earlier, like I was behind. I started at 26, and so my way to gain gain an edge on people was my fitness and it was like if i can work harder than everybody in the weight room and i can condition better and i can be smart with my coach with training um that was my way of like okay i can actually hang with these people because i know that i can outlast players within a long match or long tournaments um so that was kind of my goal i was like okay i'm going to work harder, do everything I need to do so that when they're getting tired, I'm still going and I still have a lot of energy to go. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was very specific with trainers that I chose to work out with, with coaches that I chose to use. Um, and it was a very, it was very much a team effort because it's like our coach needs to know what we're doing in the weight room. Our trainer needs to know the volume that we're doing on the beach. So it was very much a team effort of like, how do we get this, me personally and my teammate, how do we prepare you guys the best so that you can be successful? And you can't, you know, tournaments start on a Tuesday or Wednesday and they go through Sunday. So it's like, how can we make sure that you're still, you still have some left in the tank for that, those matches on Sunday? Mm -hmm. And that was kind of our goal. And so w let's go one layer deeper into that mm -hmm. and, and just talk about like, maybe take me into like, your favorite workout in the weight room or, oh, man. yeah. And what does that consist of? You know, obviously, uh, you know, in burn, as we are doing our dynamic warm up, we have an exercise called volleyball tips. Okay. And I'm sure that, you know, you are working on your calf explosion. Uh, I'm, you're, I'm sure you're doing exercises that I, I would assume have, you know, you've got bands strapped on you. I've so actually seen bands. some of, ba <laughs> some of your stuff with bands, so many bands, so all many the bands. bands. Yeah. We use a lot of bands and it, it at burn uh, because uh, a that they're convenient and b right. the resistance as you stretch the band gets greater and greater and greater right. it's great for like explosion and stuff so maybe yeah. maybe just walk me through like what a workout would look like if yeah. you were fired up for one. Oh my gosh yeah so my trainer mikhail i worked with him for the last i think five or six years of my career um i remember walking to so his gym is in his garage and he lives in the valley in california so when it's 80 degrees at the beach, it's 105 degrees in his gym. And he would always be like, you don't get a fan. You play in the heat. You got to learn how to train in the heat. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Do you want to know something? Yeah. I've got a, I've, I'll let you continue, but we're like <laughs> cut from the same cloth in that regard because I've yeah. got a, a, a gym at my house called the Burn Boot Camp Lab. Okay. And it's where I like, we do a lot of like bake the new fitness yeah. products and the new... And I love it when it's like 82 to 85 it's, degrees in there. It's amazing. It's so good. It really Everyone else hates you. it. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay. Like, You're the first person I've ever met. So we've got to yeah. do a workout together in the heat. I just, it's, yeah. there's nothing like it. Okay. There really isn't. It's uh, just incredible. Um, and I remember he was preparing us for our first tournament back after COVID and it was in guitar. So okay. we were going to Doha and we were in his 105 degree garage. And then he started telling me and my teammate, he said, you have to come in pants, a hoodie and hood up for our workouts. So here we are 105 degrees, completely long sleeve, everything with a hood on. Cause he nice. was like, 
This is how you prepare. He's trying to take you to where you meet yourself. Exactly. Right? Like yeah. at the, at yes. just laying on the floor. He wants you laying on the floor yes. or just leaving it at practice harder than you play. I kind of like his attitude. Yes. Love it. He, yeah. It, we call it the pit, <laughs> his, his gym, and it is next level. Is that so. a metaphor for taking you like to the depths? Absolutely. Showing yourself yes. how strong you really are. Yes. Yeah. And that's really what it is. I'm along with physical training. It is the mental and emotional training that you're getting with him. You are pushing yourself to places you didn't even realize you could go, you know, and it's like. Talk more about that. I would love to hear how, you know, now we're going a layer deeper. You're in this workout, like you're in that moment. You're physically know you can, but your, your mind's telling, you no. your body's telling you, you know, (laughs) everything's saying no. no. How do you do it? You look over and your teammate is standing in front of you doing the same exact thing. And you're like, okay, here we go. And we have our trainer, Mikhail, and then his son helps a lot. So he's in there yelling at us. We just, there's, oh man, the feeling of being in there is just one that I can't even put into words. It's like, you know that when you get in there, everyone that goes to him is a little crazy Mm -hmm. because you're just like, he pushes you to these limits that you're like, nobody wants to do this. Isn't isn't that what a good coach, a good trainer, a good leader or manager is yes. for yes like that's the primary function of that person is to yeah. demand more of you than you were ever going to demand out of yourself in the first place oh absolutely that's the thing that helps us get to the next level is that that type of encouragement not the encouragement we're like no everything's okay you're gonna be fine yeah. it's sympathy i'm talking about like yeah hey you want this goal here's what it's gonna take and i will not budge until you complete this task because that is the you know, that is the milestone to get to where you you right. want to go. And there's no excuses. There's no way around it, under it, over it. You've got to go through it. You've got to go through it. Yeah. And it was always, you know, he always had quotes on the mirrors or trophies. And it's like, do you want that trophy? Let's do this. You have to do this first to then get to that trophy. Oh, he would t- he would like point out your oh, yeah. physical goals right in front of you. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely. An, that's an interesting concept of mm-hmm. maybe we should think about that at burn. I'm going to start. I'm going to start asking people what they're what their, what their specific goal is, what the, yeah. what's on their vision board and show it to them as Absolutely. they're working out. Yeah. Keep it all on my phone. <laughs> exactly. Like, Jessica, this is what you told me you want. And here's your vision board. Do you <laughs> yeah. see that? Go get it. Go get it. Um, I mean, there was a time we were working out and me and my teammate both were pretty quiet. And so he started being like, when we were working out, he's like, I want you to yell. It would be six in the morning. He has neighbors. And he's like, I want you to yell as loud as you can for as long as you can. And it was just like putting us in these most uncomfortable situations that you think like, what is this actually doing? And then you get on the court and you're like, oh, you know, my teammate gets a massive block and it's like, ah, like you go crazy. And it just becomes natural because you've been doing it in a weird way in the weight room. Wow. So the energy is that important. And so in beach volleyball, everyone seems excited on every point. Yeah. And it's not that way in a lot of sports, sometimes in right. basketball, you get a layup and it's like, boom, it swings the other yeah. way. And then there's another point real quick. So yeah. that you do that. And you guys do that intentionally. intentionally. There's an intentional, uh, psychological element to mm-hmm. who's the loudest, who's going to bring it the most. Oh yeah. Wow. And especially, I mean, if you get a really good kill or a big block, like to yell because there's a net between you, right? There's no physical contact. There's nothing you can really do. But when something amazing happens, you get to just yell through the net into your opponent's face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just like, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you, how can that translate that, that type of training, mm-hmm. right? That emo- it's an emotional training technique, right? Yes. Like yeah. the emotion is excitement and you're training yourself to be excited. And the more you train yourself to be excited, the more when you're in the moment, you actually yeah. are tired physically, the more you're going to react naturally that way. And so how do you, how can we, uh, I'm thinking about like, how do we translate that into everyday life, into the, into the burn lifestyle, into the lifestyle that you live, the fitness and health lifestyle? How, what, what is the emotional, is the emotional training? I feel like it's the little things, you know, um, just like day to day, you have so many, a checklist of things to do. And it's like, get excited about getting one of those things done. And you know, that leads into just like a positive outlook on everything that you're doing versus like, oh, I have this checklist and I didn't, I finished two things and that's annoying. It's like, 
awesome. I did two things and now I get to go complete these other tasks. <laughs> so you know? does Gilbert look at you all crazy when you like, <laughs> you check off, like, you know, check my email in the morning and you're like, Let's go. Do you still do it? The day has started. <laughs> do you still do it at home? <laughs> Absolutely. By yourself? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he looks at me like I'm crazy all the time. So 